Scientists have managed to produce Hawking radiation in a lab by creating an artificial black hole event horizon. And they did this with a one-dimensional chain of atoms. So why did they make this black hole? How is a 1D chain of atoms equivalent to a black hole? And what does this research mean for the future? Let's discuss it. Before we discuss how they made a black hole, we should discuss what a black hole is in this context. We are familiar with the concept of a gravitational black hole. It is a region of space that has so much mass that the gravitational pull is so strong that nothing can escape, even light. An event horizon is the edge of a black hole at which something can still escape and crossing over this edge traps the object within the black hole forever. Obviously, we can't make a gravitational black hole in the lab. We don't have enough mass or the means of compressing it to the level required to make one. But we can make something that resembles a black hole so that we can perform experiments to understand what it means to have an event horizon. And this is where atoms come into play. But we'll get to that soon. First, how can we make something that replicates an event horizon? Well, once we recognize that an event horizon is an information boundary, we can see that there might be many ways in which we can replicate this. But what do I mean by this? Well, to make a black hole event horizon, we will get into the other types soon, you need to have a boundary that can send information in, but it can't get information out of. Now, this can't just be because of a lack of will. Sending a text to a friend that never replies doesn't count. It needs to be physically not possible to get the information out. Additionally, if we want to replicate a black hole, this information needs to go through something that resembles the time dilation that occurs around a gravitational black hole. So can we make this type of event horizon? The answer is yes. But before we get into the latest black hole version, let's talk about a result from 2008 where scientists made a white hole. If you're not sure of what a white hole is, it's the opposite of a black hole. Information can come out of a white hole, but nothing can go into it. Scientists made a white hole using nothing but a laser and an optical fiber. They sent a high-powered laser pulse into the optical fiber. And what this did was locally change the refractive index of the optical fiber where the laser pulse was. What this creates is an effectively different medium that is moving at the speed of light inside the fiber because the medium is created by the light itself. They then send another light pulse in after the first one where the second light pulse has a different wavelength and is a faster group velocity due to some clever engineering of the optical fiber. When the second pulse catches up, it's blue shifted from the changing refractive index. Ultimately, modifying the second pulse so that it slows down to match the group velocity of the initial pulse. Thus, the high-powered laser pulse produces a white hole event horizon, where light can approach it but is slowed down such that it can never pass it. It may seem somewhat different to the idea of a white hole that you might have in your head, but it does match many of the predictions you can place on a gravitational white hole. Now let's get back to the black hole. For a black hole, we want to replicate information going in, but never coming back out. But there is another theory that we should expect from a black hole, and that is Hawking radiation. Stephen Hawking famously predicted the existence of radiation coming from black holes due to quantum fluctuations at the event horizon that would eventually lead to black holes evaporating. Unfortunately, we have never observed Hawking radiation because it is just too weak. And in many cases, the signature of this radiation is below the cosmic microwave background. So we likely won't see this in any case. Our best chance is to find or make a super small black hole, which would start to rapidly evaporate. Or we just make a non-gravitational black hole and study that instead. This is where physicists have suggested and simulated the possibility of using a one-dimensional chain of atoms to investigate the physics of black holes. Here they take ultra-cold atoms, which we have unbelievable control over, and have electrons propagate along this one-dimensional chain. 
For an evenly spaced one-dimensional chain, the electrons move along in a smooth way that we can describe as a wave. But if we change the physical spacing of the atoms, then we introduce a drastic change in the way the electron moves. By gradually increasing the gap between the atoms, the electron wave function becomes longer and longer, replicating the red shifting of light near event horizon of a black hole. Now, because these are atoms, we can form this event horizon and then remove it. And then we can try different types of event horizons in different regimes, allowing us to simulate many different types of black holes. What is interesting is that in their simulations, when an event horizon was introduced, they saw an increase in temperature, which matched the prediction for Hawking radiation. Now, of course, this is very preliminary. We will have to wait for all experiments. And there will be many questions about if a 1D event horizon can match the physics in three dimensions at all. After all, in condensed matter, we see a lot of differences between 3D and 2D materials. Either way, this is very exciting research that might answer fundamental questions we have about the universe. Another open question we have is what makes up a proton? Check out this video because it turns out that we are still discovering more about what actually makes up a proton.